Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you today. Today, we're going to take a look. I think it's time we drill down and take a look at how far away could we be from an XRP breakout, a new all-time high, the bull run we've been waiting for since 2017, 2018. Somebody rolled that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove and everything that we're talking about here today. Let's go ahead and get started right now. XRP owned by the top 100 accounts is sitting at... 34,483,640,768 XRP. That's 65.17% of the total. So there you have it right here. We're looking at the XRP rich list today is where we're starting. We're going to look at the 2017-2018 bull run. I know a lot of people that follow the channel here were not here for that. And we're going to drill down and take a look at that today. And the fact is, is we're approaching very, very quickly here, the end of this year, obviously. And we're also approaching what was the date of that 2017, 2018 bull run and what may happen this year. And will it look a lot like it did in 2017, 2018? Let's take a look right now. So we see six accounts here with over a billion, 14 with over half a million to a billion and so on and so on. But let me move on down here where most of us probably are down in this lower end here. And this is what you can see. And I'll just start with these. And obviously there are some big holders out here. I'm not going to deny that. We see here, um, you know, uh, starting at 5,000, there is 76,000 plus accounts here and 10,000 and up, 80,600, 25 to 49,000, 34,792 accounts, 50,000 to 74,000, there's 14,993 of you, and there's 6,559, 75,000 to 100,000 accounts. From 100,000 to 199,000, we have 12,404 accounts, and from 200 to 299,000, we have 3,847 accounts. And we see here there are 1,674,000 or 1,674 accounts that have 300,000 to 399, and so on and so on. And you see 890 from the 400 range and 656 to the 500 range. Wherever you fall inside of that, the reason I'm starting here today is because in the 2017 2018 bull run. It was pretty remarkable. And I have to just very quickly, you know, those of you who've been with the channel for a long time know my story, but I have to tell it to people who don't very quickly here. I FOMO'd all the way up this bull run here, this spike that we had, and all the way back down. And then for the next three or four years, obviously, I did my dis discipline buying, dollar cost average, as we call it, and the rest of it. And I'm glad that I have, because here we are today, and we're wondering if we're setting up the stage for the same move to happen as we saw in 2017-2018. Now, very quickly, I just want to say that, um, and I can and I can actually pull the data here in a second, but I just want to open this up here so we can see a little bit more spread out. And you can see just how quickly this happened. Look, November 17th, and then here's where we were by March 18th, right? We were back down here into the 49, 50 cent range, and here we started in the 23 cent range. And we see all the way up here, it, it shows two bucks, but we know it went to actually at that time frame, it went to like 384 as a high, right? That's what we actually saw there. Some say 330 or whatever, but $3 plus, it was really just shy of four bucks. It spiked there for a second. But nevertheless, are we about to see that happen again? You know, are we somewhere but like four to six weeks from potentially potentially seeing that kind of a move, that parabolic move take place again? That's what we're not sure of. Now, just to really get you a, a window here of something that just really tears me up. If you go back to this time frame here, and it was right here, it was, look, eight thousandths of a penny. And I remember when it was six thousandths of a penny when I first started reading about it. But by the time I actually started buying, it was actually in the 25 cent range, 20, 25 cent range when I bought. 
And that is what happens. And when I think about that, because April was that time frame, I think when it really started to move. Yep, it's right here. So when that started to move for me, I was seven months, six or seven months shy of getting XRP for like six thousandths of a penny at that time. Uh, and I believe it was right, yeah, right about there. So five thousand, six thousandths of a cent is what it was doing at that time. If I had caught that, oh my gosh, you have no idea. And that to this day beats me up pretty good. There's no question about it. It certainly does. But look, that's the way it goes. And I'm tickled to death that I've had this window of time because wealth creation is not made right here. Wealth creation is made while you accumulate right through here. And that's what I've been doing. Now, if we get that same run again, that's going to be great. But if we don't, and obviously none of this is financial advice, but it's exciting knowing that we're creeping up on the end of the year and coming very close to that date that it happened in 2017, 2018. Now, there's other factors for us to pay attention to out here as well. This is just a more uh, zoomed out chart here for you to see of just how that spike went. Let's see if it actually, it, it doesn't give the accurate uh, price uh, spike there. It's, it's still only showing like 270 something, but it actually, we know that it went above $3. So I'm not going to wrestle with them over it. But here's what I do know is that we know coins kit we know dark defender we know crypto bull 2020 and so many others out here are telling telling us to wait for the trigger because it is coming and you know that is extremely exciting to me and when it does we know people like coins kit have told us that we could be in the four dollar 55 cent range when it happens and we could have which is a new all-time high for xrp let alone for the year and that is exciting but we have some other factors out here that we have to pay very close attention to. Uh, one of which is understanding what's going on and what's happening in this court case. This is probably the best three minute video you're ever going to see on making people understand what's happening. Now, I know a lot of you do, but I want you to watch this three minute video and how it explains it and understand this perspective as we move through this. John Deaton is the voice of the XRP holder. The legal team for Ripple is the voice of Ripple. It has to be that way. Ripple does not represent us, just like we understand as XRP holders. Holding XRP has no right to the ownership of Ripple, the company. We all know this, right? The only one confused about any of this appears to be the SEC, and that's how we've gotten hurt. Watch this little quick clip here. Let's say you did your research and invested in an asset you knew a lot about owned by millions of people and billions of units trading on markets around the world. And you played by the rules as you knew them. But then one day, your investment was wiped out. This really happened to millions of ordinary people who invested in or built their business with the cryptocurrency XRP. But it wasn't because of a scam or fraud or market volatility. It was because of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The SEC claimed in a lawsuit that the XRP token is an unregistered investment in a company called Ripple that uses the token. Most XRP holders had never even heard of Ripple, so they looked into it. XRP holders discovered that SEC officials Jay Clayton and William Hinman both have financial ties to XRP's major competitor, Ethereum. In fact, in 2018, while he was still working for the government, Hinman gave a speech that was largely written by lobbyists declaring that Ethereum's cryptocurrency, Ether, is not a security. Ether's price skyrocketed, more than 600% since then. And Hinman? Well, he sat in his government office and collected $15 million from a law firm that promotes Ethereum. The same factors Hinman used to argue a free pass for Ether could better be applied to XRP. And yet when XRP users asked the SEC for regulatory clarity, they never got a straight answer. Instead, on his last day at the SEC, Jay Clayton filed suit against Ripple, causing the value of XRP to plummet, and with it, many investors' hopes. While XRP holders are waiting for a long court case to play out, Hinman is a senior partner with the billionaire Ethereum investors who helped write his speech. And Clayton is working for a hedge fund that made a billion dollar bet on Bitcoin and Ether. The SEC shouldn't get to pick winners and losers, 
which is why tens of thousands of XRP holders have entered the lawsuit as friends of the court against the SEC. The outcome of this court case will influence the future of regulation for all cryptocurrencies in the United States. If the SEC wins, what happened to XRP could happen to every crypto coin. But even more troubling would be letting political appointees from any party have more control over your investments than you do yourself. Government regulators have to level the playing field, not unfairly tip the scale for their friends. For more information and to join the fight, visit CryptoLaw at Crypto-Law.us. And there you have it. And I think that's the best three-minute explanation of it, of what the situation is that you could ever want to see. But why am I showing you that and talking about the bull run? Because the question is, is with the weight of the case hanging over Ripple and XRP, will we and can we see that kind of parabolic move take place with the weight of this case over our heads? That is the question. And the other questions, and there's many questions here, but the other question here is if we're going to see some kind of replica of that, which would be amazing, by the way, uh, what is the other factors that could take us to these much higher prices that we always hear and talk about on the channel? Whether it's $50, $100, $1,000, $10,000, $5,000, $10,000 dollars a coin. We know it's about mass adoption for the world and the sophisticated financial institutions and central banks. We understand that it's a wholesale back-end use because Ripple has explained that to us time and time again. But I want you to listen now, and this is obviously notwithstanding the idea and understanding that we could have a settlement at any time. But if we don't get a settlement at any time, I think that we hear it best from the Hogan legal team here, a reminder of when this case could end if there is no settlement at all. Take a listen to this clip here. But what we did not expect was in the final order and the worst news for XRP holders. And that was the order on the SEC's second motion to extend discovery. And that's right. And that delayed things right there. Now, let me bring you quickly to this clip here, which is right in this area here. So let me play it from here. Are dealt with right away. So the parties know what the pleadings are going into discovery. This court still hasn't even dealt with these motions. And that seems to be the way it's going to do it slowly and at its own pace. And what does that mean? It means that absent a settlement, this case will not be decided now until March 2022 at the earliest and possibly not even until late spring of 2022 if the court decides not to rule on some of the pending motions until after the discovery deadline, which looks really possible. And there you have it. And that means without a settlement, we could be into late spring of 2022 before this case ends. That's what's up right there. If we don't see a settlement, that's what we're looking at. Now, what we have to ask ourselves is if we see that parabolic move like we did in 2017 and 2018, that potentially gives us a new all-time high for XRP in the $4.55 range, like we've heard Coins Kid talk about. We then have to ask ourselves, what does XRP do when this case is over and resolved? And let us remember something very important about this case. There is no criminality, criminality about this case. There's no fraud or criminal charges here. So at the end of the day, this is about a fine, right? This is about a fine and about how the asset XRP will be treated by the actual regulators going forward after this is over. And you have to ask yourself, what would the price be of it then? But we're not done. We're not done because I believe that once the case is over, and this is not financial advice, but I believe that we have the potential to see another parabolic push when this case is settled and out of the way and we have clarity. But let's listen here because here's another element of clarity that we could use for the entire crypto space that could add as even more of a catalyst to the price of XRP and the motion and adoption. You're going to see that going into so 2022. 
would have fallen behind then in your in your assessment? A lot of catching Without up question. Uh, surprisingly, given where so much of the entrepreneurial activity in crypto has been U.S. based, the U.S. has kind of been a laggard in crypto regulation. There Listen very carefully to what he says here. Hasn't been a, a level of clarity that the U.S. did enable in enabling the Internet growth in the late 90s. And so I think we're still hoping for that. And I think actually you'll see progress over the next 12 to 18 months in the United States that next 12 to 18 months in the United States that you'll see progress for us to potentially move forward as the leader of this fourth industrial revolution of the new Internet of Value Web 3.0. Now, that is optimism. And I want you to add in now the idea that we could see the 2017 bull run we could see the case be settled sometime thereafter. Let's just say it goes the distance to late spring and then that be a catalyst. And let's say that even months after that, we see legislation passed by Congress, but we're not done yet. Because what about the idea that Brad Garlinghouse has told us over and over, they intend to IPO at Ripple. And what do you think that's going to do? Factor all of these things in. And I want to ask you before we leave here today, how crazy does this really look here? When we look at Dark Defender's chart that we have looked at many times on this channel, how crazy does it look that we are right here in this area and understanding that by the end or middle of next year, because of all of these events possibly happening together or in a order, couldn't we really see a 50 or $100 XRP? I don't find it very hard to believe. I really don't. You factor in the case settling after a new all-time high. You factor in legislation coming out. You factor in an IPO by Ripple. And I think you've got the makings for an absolute move that we just make our heads spin. Now, None of this is guaranteed, and it's all really theory-based and just speculative, obviously. But these things are in front of us, and at some point, they must be resolved. The case must end. It will end. At some point, legislation must be passed so this actual new asset class can have the framework just like the conventional stock market does in security products. And then there will be clarity enough for Ripple to actually IPO and go public. What will the price of XRP be then? That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Make sure you share with somebody you know and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Make sure you check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. The only thing better than buying crypto is buying tax-free crypto. And you can do that with iTrust Capital. But you got to click the link. I'll catch all of you on the next one.